morning everyone and welcome to the start of another weekly reading vlog. I, wow, tea all over me, that's not a good start is it? Oh dear. I thought I would update you on what I've been reading recently and then what I'm hoping to read this week. I also have a couple of days of annual leave this week so hopefully this means reading all the books. So firstly, last night I finished reading My Dark Vanessa. I, don't, I can't even really put into words this book. If you want to read this book, I would very much recommend going and reading the content warnings for it because there's so much that happens in here that could potentially trigger someone that even I, can you hear my cat? She's boxes and cats, they just love it. But even for me, someone who isn't necessarily aware of specific triggers that I have or things that may upset me, like this book, really upset me and like it dug deep down <laughs> inside and like pretty much ripped me apart. I had to really push myself to finish reading this book. Um, it's very very dark, very very disturbing. If you don't know, this book is essentially about a middle-aged man, I think he's in his 40s, 43 or something, who grooms a young woman called Vanessa when she's 15 and then proceeds to have a relationship with her and you read through her perspective. The book Lolita by Vladimir Nobokov is mentioned throughout the book, like the author actually mentions at the end that she very much got her inspiration from Lolita and so the main character Vanessa, she reads Lolita all throughout the book and it's it's mentioned a lot and it's very much Lolita but from the girl's perspective and because it's told in first person you just you feel like and, and especially as a woman reading this it feels like you are experiencing these things very viscerally it's so raw and affecting like I just I can't explain it other than it's the hardest book I've ever read but simultaneously one of the best books I've ever read. I've never read anything like this before. It was beautiful and very, very disturbing. So there we go, take what you will from that. I'm still reading Middlemarch by George Eliot, which I'm really enjoying. I'm about 560 pages into this one and it's just over 900 pages. So I think I'm going to finish it this month, hopefully. Sometimes I sit and listen to the audiobook whilst also reading the book, which I find really useful. In this one so far, we're following different groups of people in this kind of fictional place, this fictional town called Middlemarch. My favourite of the people in here is a lady named Dorothea and her sister Celia. Dorothea has married an older gentleman called Mr Casorban and I just really enjoy her storyline specifically. There's a lot of kind of politics around the time kind of thing. It reminds me somewhat of Poldark in the way that there's like people running for parliament and like a lot of discussions about like people, mayors of the area and all that kind of stuff and I'm really enjoying it. So whilst I was in the midst of reading My Dark Vanessa, I thought I would pick up something that's a little bit more lighthearted um, to take me out of that dark space for a while. And so I picked up Across the Wall by Garth Nix. If you haven't read anything by Garth Nix before, I would really recommend you do so. This book is basically a book of short stories within the world of the Old Kingdom. And the Old Kingdom trilogy starts with Sabriel, Sabriel, Lyriel, and Aborson. And they're brilliant. If you want a fun, just, really good fantasy series I would definitely recommend. I've only read a few pages of this one so far but I'm looking forward to reading some more. And then another couple of books which I'm potentially going to read this week because I realised I haven't really read any non-fiction this year at all. Like my mind has definitely been in the like fantasy, fictional worlds, all that kind of stuff. So I thought I would pick up potentially Mothers, an essay on love and cruelty by Jacqueline Rose. So this is essays around being mothers and the idea of what a mother means to society and the burdens we kind of put on mothers and all that kind of stuff and I read the first few pages of the first essay and it seemed interesting so far it was kind of talking about women who weren't UK residents using the NHS to have babies and so 
I'm interested to see what the author's standpoint on that will be. So I'll definitely let you know if I decide to pick up that one a bit more. And then the final book that I'm hoping to potentially pick up is Solutions and Other Problems by Ali Brosh. So this is non-fiction. It's also like a graphic memoir. It's like 500 pages long. So I'm looking forward to picking it up. I'm hoping that it's gonna be as funny as the last one that I read from her, which was Hyperbole and a Half, very similar format to this one. And so I'm hoping I'll have some laughs with this one because I feel like my spirit needs to be lifted after reading My Dark Vanessa because it was a pretty heavy read. Just noticed it. Can you see him sitting on the bookshelf there? Rascal, rascal of a cat there. Anyway, I'm gonna read for a bit now. We're gonna have a lovely day, I believe. We're gonna go for a walk by a river. So I'll take you along there and I'll see you later. Bye. Good morning everyone, we're now on Wednesday, this week is flying by, but I do have tomorrow and Thursday off so I'm hoping to vlog a lot more of just stuff when I'm not working, which will be nice, I'm really looking forward to it actually. So I thought I'd update you. I finished reading Solutions and Other Problems by Ali Brosh and unfortunately I really didn't enjoy it, in fact I, I gave it two stars which really shocked me. Also it does surprise me because when I looked on the reviews for this one, there um, there are obviously a lot of reviews and there are only a few that are lower rating and only a few that share a similar opinion to me so maybe it's just me take my review with a little pinch of salt but essentially if you've read hyperbole and a half which is the first book by ali brosh in that book she's very clever very witty in the way that she kind of tells the stories the the kind of self-awareness of the, the things that she's sharing basically and, and, and it's basically her sharing stories from her life funny little uh, kind of drawings let me just show you the the style of drawings I mean you can see on the front there but um, essentially it's like these funny little characters that she draws and in the first book it was just so cleverly done um, it had me properly laughing like out loud just non-stop it was just brilliant I think sadly she maybe just tried too hard to get to that same space and and actually maybe the second book didn't need that or maybe it needed something different because this one it felt completely all over the place like none of the stories really fed into each other it just felt like someone had dumped all of their brain onto a page the publishers had just gone yep sure we'll publish that in the first book she very much um has a, a thread throughout that it deals with mental health because she has suffered with anxiety and depression and that's very obvious in the first one but almost in a positive light that it seems like hey look we all have these moments but you know we can get through them kind of thing in this one it just seems like she's having a complete crisis honestly i hope that ali brosh is okay because all of these stories made me feel uncomfortable they made me feel quite cringy it they were like they were some of them were so completely random and like like someone was just having a breakdown honestly that's how it read some of the stories there's one where she um, decides to go and like fight her fears so essentially she's trying to like expose herself to things that she finds the most scary so that she can get over her fears and kind of initiate some kind of survival mode within herself and in the book she just goes and takes a load of drugs like walks really far away from her house so when the drugs hit her she then has no idea where to go she can't use her phone she's basically lost and terrified hoping that a survival mode will come in and then the end of that story goes off on a completely different touch it was just so completely bizarre you can see my neighbors outside and i don't want them seeing me make videos i'm gonna shut the curtain a bit the reason I feel really bad is because in the book she shares that between the last book and this book her sister died, she broke up with her husband 
and she basically just had a meltdown and, and it's very clear that she's really suffering with loneliness and depression and not knowing what to do with her life and, and what life even means and if it's even worth it. It's really a very sad book and, and not in a sad but also spins a positive or slightly humorous like I literally didn't find any of it funny I almost was just reading between the lines on every single story and just thinking is this author okay yeah anyway I feel like I've spoken about that for quite a while but um I would really love to hear other people's thoughts on it because as I said when I looked on Goodreads most people were like oh my god this is amazing she's incredible I laughed my pants off the whole time and I didn't get that at all so anyway still reading Middlemarch <laughs> I'm hoping to read this by the end of the month I'm I'm getting there I'm like on the third the, I'm probably on the final third now so slowly trekking along there are definitely parts of the story that I don't enjoy as much as others like there are there's two kind of main threads that I enjoy um between two couples and their love interests I'm not so interested in like the politicky kind of stuff but hey ho I've also read a couple of the essays in this mother's book. Definitely found that reading this at night is a little bit more difficult because my brain, my brain cannot function to be reading like heavy or like even remotely kind of academic stuff. Like I seriously need like easier stuff to read in the evenings because a day of work leaves my brain like mush basically. And the final book that I'm reading still is Across the Wall by Garth Nix. I am about nearly halfway through I guess and I'm hoping to read some more of this one this afternoon. I'm actually doing my first YouTube live today. I've not joined one before. These kind of reading sprints, I think they just look really fun. My lovely friend Shah over at Thoroughly Enjoyed Books, she is doing a live this Wednesday tonight. You won't see this in time to know that you can come and join it but hopefully if I do it again do let me know if you'd be interested in seeing. I was like really nervous to ask her like if I could join because I've not done one before. I don't know how to do it. I feel like I'm a bit of like a noob when it comes to it. Do people even call themselves noobs anymore? This is the problem when you're like hitting 30 on booktube you definitely feel like you're like too old for some of this stuff but hey ho I'm gonna join hopefully it'll be really fun. Yeah if you guys would be interested in me doing a live anything on my channel whether it's just a live conversation with you guys to just have a chat or whether you would be interested in reading sprints or product productivity kind of sprints let me know because once I know how to do it <laughs> I would certainly be happy to do that with you guys on my channel so yeah I'll leave it there and I'll speak to you later Hey everyone, I thought I'd jump on and give you a quick update. I've been reading away this morning, it's now Thursday, and I finished Across the Wall this morning. I wasn't overwhelmed with this book. I also didn't realise that although this is included as part of the Old Kingdom series as like a companion novel, only the first story is actually to do with the Old Kingdom, then all the other short stories in here are completely random, not attached to the Old Kingdom at all, which was a little bit disappointing because I really like the Old Kingdom, I really like the story, the kind of world building, everything to do with that, and the other ones were completely different. And like I've mentioned it here before, I'm not the biggest fan of random kind of sto short stories, like I don't really find myself getting attached to characters and things like that, so didn't particularly love it, I gave it three stars. Also read Mothers by Jacqueline Rose, again this was another three star read for me. I thought it was okay, it's quite a short book for something that explores quite a large topic. So it essentially is looking at mothers, the burden we put on mothers and basically saying like everything that's wrong with the world and everything that's happening within the world is put at the doorstep of women and mothers. She centres a lot of the book around fictional mothers or people that have created fictional mothers, a whole section on Eleanor Ferrante and the fictional mothers that she has created and lots of talk of like Greek mythology and different mothers in Greek mythology and whilst that was interesting I just didn't find it particularly like relatable specifically to us in our time right now. There were short sections on today and, and kind of what it means for us in the world but I, I found that the author 
when she was kind of relating to stuff happening in today time and, and that kind of stuff, actually just using a lot of snippets from other people's work didn't seem to really be coming up with a lot of her own thoughts on matters, a lot of kind of just copied over texts from other essays and books that people have written on mothers. I thought it was okay, I wasn't overwhelmed with it, in fact I think it's going to be quite a forgettable one for me, I don't know if I'm going to be thinking much on this after reading it, so that was a bit of a shame. Two pretty disappointing reads to be honest. My plan for today and tomorrow is to finish middle March. I'm about 200 pages from the end so I think that's very doable and I'm going to sit and listen to it this afternoon and do a little bit of embroidery while whilst I do that, so I will take you along. See you in a minute. Morning everyone, welcome to Friday. Do excuse my general appearance, I figured I wasn't going to put a full face of makeup on just to tell you that I finished reading Middlemarch. I finished it last night, I really really enjoyed it. I like the way it ended in the fact that the author kind of looked back and like reflected on all of the characters and kind of summed up where they were, what had happened to them since the kind of close of the last scene. I thought that was a really nice touch. I quite liked that because there were particular people that I really enjoyed the, the characters of. Dorothea was absolutely my favourite all the way through, right up until the end, she was brilliant. So yeah, today I'm just going to have a really chill day. It's actually Mark's birthday this weekend, so I'm going to bake a cake and so that will be in next week's vlog so you can see that then. I hope you've all been having a really lovely week, come and tell me what you've been reading down in the comments below. As always I will leave links to everything I've mentioned down there as well. I hope you're all having a lovely day and I will speak to you soon. Bye!